Good evening, Kashif, Miriam, and friends in Pakistan. As little children, we were about seven, eight years of age, when many of us, former Roman Catholics or in other denominations, participated in a ritual ceremony called Holy Communion. Of course, we did not make that decision by ourselves, but with the direction of parents and teachers. Is the ritual Holy Communion, Holy Communion biblical? The answer is no. Can we find instructions in the Bible? That'll be tough. What then is Holy Communion? This is according to the Encyclopedia Britannica, the Holy Communion, also called Eucharist or Lord's Supper, in Christianity is a ritual commemoration of Jesus' Last Supper with his disciples. The Eucharist, translated from the Greek word Eucharistia, or Thanksgiving, is the central act of Christian worship and as practiced by most Christian churches in some form. What most Christian denominations call communion is a substantially altered version of the original New Testament Passover service. In terms of method, in custom, and especially in frequency. In most cases, it has become a humanly devised substitute for the Passover service, the Bible commands. Today, we are going to learn that keeping the Passover is biblical and participation in, in the tradition of communion is not. A question to ask ourselves is from where did the word communion come? Where can we find what the Bible says about communion? As in most biblical teachings, the word communion is also misunderstood by the majority of Christians. The word communion comes from three scriptures in the New Testament. That is referencing in the New King James Version. Let us read 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 16. I will read it in English and then Kashif will Read it in your language. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? So there is the word communion coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 16. The word communion is translated in Strong's Dictionary word number G2842 as koinonia, pronounced koinonia. It has several meanings, such as participation, sharing, fellowshipping, communicating, distribution, contribution, all of these words can be applied to this word koinonia. So when understood properly, 1 Corinthians 10 verse 16 can read as, the cup of blessings which we bless, is it not the sharing or participation of the blood of Christ? The bread of bread which we break, is it not the sharing or participation of the body of Christ? See, the translation, when properly applied, gives us a better meaning. Similarly, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, let us go there. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. The New King James Version reads, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness, 
and what communion, again, or participation or sharing has light with darkness. So it's the word fellowship, the word participation, the word sharing comes into play when we compare righteousness and lawlessness, when we try to compare light with darkness. And again, in the third scripture that I was referring to, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 14. It reads, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. So if we substitute the word communion as communicating or fellowshipping, it will read as the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communicating or the fellowshipping of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. So we see the word communion gives us different meaning when properly understood with the grace of God. Luke 22 explains the institution of the New Testament Passover. I will not read it today, but I suggest that you find some time to study it. You also won't find wafers and substitutes for wine in the Lord's Passover, as you do in the communion. But the new symbols of unleavened bread and genuine wine they are what is used to celebrate the Passover. Unlike wafers and substitute of wine used in the ceremony of the so-called Holy Communion. How often should you take the Passover? The Christians partake in the communion almost every time or whenever they choose to attend Sunday services or other man-made festival days. When originally introduced to the nation of Israel, the Old Testament, the Passover was clearly a once a year observance. We will read that in Leviticus chapter 23 verse 5. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 5. On the 14th day of the first month at twilight is the Lord's Passover. On the 14th day of the first month at twilight is the Lord's Passover. Very specific. It's not celebrated every Sunday or every time the Christian goes to church. How to conduct the Passover is also explained in the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verses 1 to 14. You can read it when you can find some time. How the Passover is conducted is explained in the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verses 1 to 14. When God visited his festivals, including the Passover, in Leviticus, chapter 23, each festi festival except for the weekly Sabbath, was on an annual basis. That is to be celebrated once every year. So likewise, Jesus and his disciples kept the Passover every year at the appointed times. If you want scriptural evidence, you could read Matthew chapter 26, verse 17. Matthew chapter 26, verse 17. Mark chapter 14, verse 12, Mark, chapter 14, verse 12, and Luke, chapter 22, verses 7 to 13. Luke, chapter 22, verses 7 to 13. Notice that Jesus had observed the Passover annually from his early youth days. Please turn with me to the book of Luke, chapter 2, we will read verses 41 to 43. Luke 2, 41 to 43. His parents went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. When they had finished the days, 
as they return, the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem and Joseph and his mother did not know it. The entire annual spring festival period included in the biblical commanded Passover and the days of uneven bread as well. That's why the scripture we just read states days in plural. The days were referred to the feast of Passover and the days of uneven bread together. Uneven bread proceeding from the feast of Passover. Now, the question about how often one must keep the Passover arises when we read 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26. Again here, my purpose is to compare Holy Communion with what is substituted uh, as the Passover. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26. Here we will address the problem of what the Bible means as often. Often. Is it daily, weekly, monthly, or once a year according to God? As a young man, I also thought the word often meant very frequently. Is the frequency then left up to each individual to decide? Should we take the communion, that is the Passover, whenever we want, or is there a specific prescribed frequency? Scripture gives no hint of the early church adding to or changing the dates originally ordained for God's festivals. The phrase concerning the Passover is in 1 Corinthians 11, 26, and it reads like this. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. This, this simply points out that by observing the Passover each year on the appropriate day, members of the church proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. That is what it means by often every year. Memorials such as this are held once a year, biblically, as we see in world events too, including our birthdays, if celebrated. Certainly, this is also the custom of most mankind in commemorating most events, isn't it? Passover is the most solemn observance in a true Christian's life. Participating in man-made ritual called Holy Communion is not. It practically cannot be solemn if done every week in any case. The Passover plainly figures the sacrifice of Christ for our sins. Please turn with me to the book of John Chapter 1, verse 29. John, chapter 1, verse 29. It reads, The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. We understand this, my friends. As stated in the book of Acts, chapter 4, verse 12. Acts chapter 4, verse 12, we read, Nor is there salvation in any, any other, for there is no other name under heaven given by men by which we must be saved. So unlike the Holy Communion, Passover is a very serious event you and I must commemorate. And the Holy Communion does not teach any of these things. Salvation only comes by Jesus Christ and by through the feast of Passover ordained by God himself. We can be renewed each day, week, month, 
for year passing if we truly repent of course first corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 first corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 therefore purge out the old leaven that you may be a new lump since you truly are unleavened for indeed christ our passover was sacrificed for us you see the in important scripture communion has no place we need to prepare for this ceremony in advance that is the passover leaven is compared to sin and we are asked to get rid of it from our personal lives we can take stock of our personal life and compare our conduct over the previous year and see what progress we have made in our spiritual walk we cannot take the passover in a manner that is not fitting and proper god won't be pleased if that happens please turn with me to first corinthians chapter 11 verse 27 first corinthians chapter 11 verse 27 therefore whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the lord but let a man, man examine himself and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup for he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drink judgment to himself not discerning the lord's body regrettably one of the hidden facts for insisting on multiple observances of communion in place of the passover is that it encourages unsuspecting people to ignore other true biblical festivals and view them as unnecessary but observing the feast appointed by god is essential if we wish to obey god and truly understand the meaning of his plan for all humanity finally only god can make anything holy we read that in genesis chapter 2 verses 1 to 3 genesis chapter 2 verses 1 to 3 thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished and on the seventh day god ended his work which he had done and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done then god blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work which god created and made god sanctified or hallowed or made holy the seventh day the sabbath it takes a holy god to make holy time and he made no holy time other than his weekly and annual sabbaths though people can be made holy by god people cannot make something holy because they do not possess the holiness that can be transferred to anything else since only god can make something holy any day other than what god has made holy is not holy even though billions of people may proclaim it to be holy it cannot be holy time it is utterly impossible for humans to make anything holy no day can be holy except for the one god made holy so holy communion is not truly holy therefore brethren and friends we conclude that as with all scripture satan influence man to duplicate passover as holy communion and the ritual communion is not to be observed by the child of god 
thank you for listening and i hope this will be a useful lesson for all of you